today I am so excited because we are going to be chatting about my top 10 series of all time ranked. I have ranked them from number 10 to number 1 and we're going to be going through them. So many will know a theme of this year for me <laughs> is to finish series, is to like finally finish series. Let me tell you, I didn't have a lot to pick from <laughs> to make this list because I often just read first books in series. It's sad. It's sad, you know. It's, it's a shame. So yeah, that's a big goal for me this year, but I thought it would be fun to do this video now before I've kind of done that. And then maybe in like two years time, do this again and refresh it and see what's changed. I would love to be able to compare the two. So I wanted to have this now as kind of like a beginning point almost. So a lot of these series I have finished or I've read all that's out. So if it's not a completed series, that kind of does like put it a little bit lower down the list because it's not, you know, finished or I haven't finished it all myself. But before we get into this, I would love to know what your predictions are going to be. Like, please comment in down below, like pause the video, comment maybe what you think my top three are going to be. I'm really intrigued. I really don't know what to expect from you and like what I think you're going to say. Yeah, I don't know if it'll, there'll be a few unexpected things in there and this could change, you know, it's all dependent on how I'm feeling like on the day I made the list. But let's just get straight into it and talk about my top 10. So number 10 was a difficult one. Number nine and 10, I would say are not series I've given all the books five stars they're kind of I think I've given both of these four stars this one it's one of those series where like the series as a whole is greater than individual parts so number 10 is the singing hill cycle by Nevo we have Empress of Sword and Fortune and when the tiger came down the mountain the third one is coming out this year I can't remember what it's called I think it's got pigs on the cover <laughs> So this is like this really short novellas. They're these kind of like epic stories, but very contained where main character Chi is meeting people and finding out stories and their job is kind of to record stories. And what I love about these books is they're kind of like a love letter to storytelling. I feel like the way that they honor storytelling as a craft is really beautiful and unusual and I've loved the experience of reading both of these so I'm so excited for the third one to come out. I think there's going to be at least like five um, and I love a good novella as well. I love a short book and like for me this is some of the best novellas I've read in terms of telling a really vivid detailed believable nuanced story in a short space of time. That was beautiful you did such a good job of expressing yourself. Number nine is the Girls of Paper and Fire series. So this one is a bit funny like I said. Girls of Paper and Fire is an all-time favorite YA fantasy for me. It was five stars and I have like I feel like I owe this book a lot in terms of getting me back into reading. Like it found me when I was like a young duckling like <laughs> not reading and it just found me at the perfect time and I feel like I owe a lot to it. This one was like a 3.5. I think the second one was not my favourite and I am yet to read the final one. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to it but I haven't read it yet. I need- I know I need to, I know I need to, I know I need to but like I'm scared because I feel like everyone's gonna die. So this series is on here because I look on it so fondly. Even if like numerically <laughs> there may be series I've like read two books from and rated higher because this one wasn't my favourite. I just love it. I just love love the ethos behind this series. I love the ideas. I love what it's examining, particularly for YA. So if you don't know, we are following Lei, who is, um, becomes a paper girl. She's forced to be a paper girl at the palace, who are these girls who are forced to sleep with the king. The second and third one, I'm guessing, are much more like war. They kind of veer away from this theme. But the first one in particular is looking at the different ways that trauma manifests for each of these girls and I just think it was so beautifully done with so much respect and it's sapphic the series is sapphic as well and I, I'm hoping I'm gonna love the third one because I'm pretty sure I heard this was supposed to be a duology but then the publisher turned it into a trilogy and I felt like you could really tell that in the second book so I'm hoping in the third one we'll like get back on track with everything. Then we have a crowd favourite, a crowd favourite coming in at number eight it is the Six of Crows trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Don't be shocked? You're shocked? You're shocked? I have a soft spot for Lee Bardugo. I feel like if I was like ever to become an author, like I have this fantasy, like the fantasy in my brain is me and Lee Bardugo, like she mentors me. Like I feel like we would just vibe. I feel like we would get along. It's a lot of fantasies. And when I feel the fantasy, 
it is my reality. But I really loved this. I gave Six of Crows, I think, four stars and Crooked Kingdom five, and maybe even like a 4.5 for this. I think it is a great, great fantasy series. We're getting into the big guns now. Like we're really getting into like the top series. I just love the world, the characters. I mean, it's popular for a reason. I genuinely think this series like deserves to be popular. Crooked Kingdom, like bro, I cried. <laughs> And this one is set very much in Ketterdam, which is like the place that they live. Like this one, they kind of go out of it, but this one you stay in Ketterdam and I just love the setting. I feel like it's so vivid. I actually understood the magic systems in this series versus in Shadow Environ. Whoa, did not understand a single thing. Did not understand a single thing. I also think this is just a masterclass of like a good ensemble cast for YA fantasy and like it being done well. I do love a good ensemble cast and I just love it. Yeah, I just love the fantasy world. I love Lee Bodiga's writing and I can't wait to actually reread these. I think it will be really fun to reread this series at some point. Next we have a series, we've gone from a super popular series to a series that like no one else has read <laughs> on Booktube. That is the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries coming in at number seven. So this probably will be higher maybe one day when I've read more. I've only read the first three, which are A Quiet Life in the Country, In the Market for Murder, and Death Around the Bend. Now, are these literary masterpieces? Perhaps not. <laughs> they are your cozy mysteries. We're following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo, who are best friends. And they have they have like this past of like, they've worked for the government, like being like spies, like killing bitches. But they're like, we're retiring. We're a lady and a maid. We're like gonna be classy. We're gonna retire to this lovely village. Um, turns out they moved to the murder capital of, the, of England. Like, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting that. It's kind of them just like figuring out these murder mysteries in each of these books or other kinds of mysteries and it's like cozy, it's fun, they have a great banter between them and it's just, just definitely a very much a comfort series for me. I definitely need to read the fourth one soon because I do own it. This is generally just some of the best like cozy mystery books I have ever read. I think the characters are amazing, I think the plotting of like the stories is great, it's a great like evocative point in history, you know, it's like that classic quaint English village that Agatha Christie kind of was known for and I don't know, I just really really love it. They're kind of great escapism. I think they're really well done. So, I love you Lady Hardcastle. <laughs> Okay, number six is The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. So I read this very recently. This was like the first series that I finished, did a whole vlog for um, as part of Series Wipeout, which I'm doing this year. And listen, <laughs> the first book was like a 3.5. Second one, 4.5. Last one, 5. One of like the greatest expanses of fantasy I've ever read. Miss Fondly, I refuse to believe it. I don't understand how a brain can come up with this story. It feels like Miss Fondly is like, I don't know, God. <laughs> So I was not the biggest fan of Jade City. I was a bit disappointed. I felt like I was reading something different than everyone else. But when I read Jade War and Jade Legacy, I just felt like I fell into the story immediately and really saw how amazing it was. And at, the further you get into the series, like this big long series, I think the more you appreciate like what Fondly is doing and all the seeds that have been laid and like you get so attached to the characters. So this if you don't know is like following a mafia family as there's like this kind of like cold war between them and other mafia families where they live and there's this substance called jade which gives them like magical powers and I just love political maneuverings in books and this is done so well and like the sneakiness like some of Hilo's strategizing and plotting reminds me of Kaz in Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, like how the characters will be plotting stuff behind the scenes that you're not necessarily aware of and it gets revealed to you. Oh my god, it's so much fun. I love it. I love it. And this was a series I just felt like I ate my, you know, ate my words. Is that the right saying? Like I really, you know, turned a corner with this series and I just love it and appreciate it so much now. And I'm trying to make my dad read it, but he's taking ages to read J-City and it's angering me. It's angering me. <laughs> okay, so we're into the top five. Number five is the Wayward Children series by Sean and Maguire. Another like novella series. Maybe it's not that I love them more, but I read them. Like I'm more likely to read them. So I only own three physically. I do need to like get them all. I want to get them all physically. When I've read these three physically, they've all been five stars. And I'm pretty sure like, all of the other ones were like 4, 4.5, but I think as great as the audiobooks are for this series, I think you read them so much better physically, like when you're the one reading the words and it's going through your brain, because there's this like magicalness to the writing. Writing? I said that really weird, oh my god. <laughs> writing? <laughs> yeah, there's this magic and there's this like whimsy and there's this fairy tale like ness and I think reading it in your own voice in your head really like enhances 
how great the story is. I don't even know which of these three would be my favourite. Maybe Across the Green Grass Fields. There's something about the friendships in this and the found family that I really, really loved. But I also loved the latest one, Where the Dragon Girls Go. I just think the series is incredible. This is a series about wayward children who go through these doors and discover these worlds that are perfect for them. And some of the books are, like Across the Green Grass Fields is a child like discovering their door and their world. Whereas these two are kind of when the, um, it kind of alternates between books. When the child is back in our world and it's them like either trying to get back to their their world or like negotiating the feelings that come from being back here and I just oh, I just love it I just absolutely love it I feel like this series is just absolutely incredible and so clever and I'm really excited for the next one because I'm like I know what it is gonna be and I'm just so excited number four this one it was hard between number four and number three to really, well even like four, three and two to like order them, but I have done it, <laughs> I've done it. You are so strong. This is just how I was feeling on the day. I mean, in terms of rating, I've given all of this series five stars, whereas I gave number three a five, a four and a five. So like mathematically, this is better than that, but just how I was feeling on the day, okay? We have the Bear and the Nightingale series in number four. So Bear and the Nightingale, Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch. I have these gorgeous, oh my God, these fairy loot editions. I love them so much. I'm so glad I got them. I cannot wait to reread the series one day using these editions. I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. So this is like a Russian inspired fantasy where we follow Vasya from Bear into like womanhood by the end of the last book and it's kind of her discovering her powers and in particularly in this first one we're, we're uncovering the myth or is it a myth of the winter king I absolutely love this series I cannot wait Catherine Arnold at the moment is like publishing middle grade horror which I have been reading and enjoying but I really want like another like adult fantasy series from her I just want it so bad like this is another series that really got me into reading I read this before I had my channel and um just like the beautiful prose in these. Um, Vasya's story as she grows is absolutely beautiful. I love again like an historical fantasy. I love historical settings and I love like when an author really manages to capture them but like infuse magic in them I think it's so much fun. And each book like does such a good job. This is one of my favourite things about this series of expanding its remit. Like in the first book we're very much just focused on Vasya trying to save the town she grew up in and then it becomes the city, like the kind of country that she grew up in, and then it becomes the world. And I just think there's a marked growth, not only in Vasya's age, but in like the, the remit and like the expanse of the series as each book goes on. Um, and there's some great villains in this series. I think just like the topics and the themes it uncovers are absolutely amazing. Okay, top three. Oh my God, this is intimidating. So number three is the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I love it. <laughs> Maybe this is on here because it is more fresh and I feel like As Good As Dead, which I read at the start of this year, is like one of the best final books in a series I've ever read. Like, this is a reason to celebrate. Oh my god, the growth in this series from first book to last book is absolutely insane. So we're following Pip who is like this um, high school student and she wants to investigate this cold case from her town where this girl um, was killed by her boyfriend, he admitted to killing her but Pip doesn't believe that's actually what happened and so she's kind of investigating it. These books are mixed media which is my shit oh my god I love mixed media books if a book has mixed media I'm like oh my god let me like eat it up let me eat it up the middle one was a bit weaker for me but this is like beyond a five star I felt like the direction this I mean the first book was incredible like amazing like a real solid mystery but this one like oh the route that the, the series goes down is so unpredictable it was just amazing it was such a shock to me I could never have predicted we would go from here to here and I just think it was done so well like Holly Jackson's mind I cannot wait for whatever Holly Jackson puts out next we don't have any news but I'm just like hoping and waiting I'm like just like oh my god I can't wait I generally can't wait but the whole series is just really fun YA mysteries I just loved it I just oh my god this last one <laughs> it was so good okay top two everyone we're into the top two number two is the Heartstopper graphic novel series ah! so I'm addicted to this um, not in a literal medical sense, but I don't think I could live without it. This is Heartstopper by Ernest Oseman. You'll have seen me doing a lot of reactions to the trailers that have been coming out. I am 
I apologise for who I'm about to become on April 22nd. I genuinely apologise because I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. This is the love story of two boys, Nick and Charlie, in graphic novel format. And it's just the most joyous series to ever exist. I love it so, so much. I love them so much. It's incredible. Like, it's the best thing to ever exist. I love them so much. I don't read enough graphic novels. Like, genuinely, I feel like I should read more because I love these so much. Like, how can I not be reading more graphic novels? Like, I love them. I love them. I love them. <laughs> These are some of my favourite characters, my favourite probably relationship in books. Um, and I just also love like the way that Alice Oseman has illustrated it, like the um, facial expressions in these graphic novels are amazing. Like the way they look at each other, it kills me. And they're just a joyous, fun read and I just love them. And I very rarely get attached to characters in this way, but like I'm so attached to them, I love them so much. <laughs> okay, my top series. <laughs> My top series of all time, are we surprised, is The Athena Club Mysteries, which is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. Oh my god, I can't hold these bags. Um, European travel for the monstrous gentlewoman and the sinister mystery of the mesmerizing girl. Listen, it's perfect. These, oh, <laughs> these books are perfect. You cannot tell me anything. Perfect. 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 Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. My babies, like genuinely, my favorite books of all time. Not, I don't, I can't imagine like anything comparing to them. In this, we're following daughters or female versions of men from classic Victorian literature as they solve mysteries together and grow their found family. Listen, I said I don't get attached to characters, but these girls are above anyone else. My love for them, my love for their friendship and their sisterhood is beyond, like it's beyond. It also has like Sherlock and Watson in here, like lots of other like, um, Dorian Gray appears at one point, like lots of other characters from classic Victorian media and literature. And I just love this series. I think the second one's my favorite. I've reread this one at the end of last year. I need to reread the second one at some point. It's just in, like, it's intimidating because it's long. Like it won't take me long to read, but like I need to fit it around all the other reading I need to do. The wit in this book, the historical setting, the uncovering of the mysteries, the sisterhood. I love it. One of my favorite things I will say about this series is Catherine, one of the characters, Catherine Moreau, is writing the books. She's writing them about their lives. And often the girls, other girls will cut in and it will be like a script format with them saying, oh, it didn't happen like that, or Catherine, you're annoying, or whatever. Um, and I think the characters in this are amazing. I think like Diana, an iconic character, Diana Hyde, a queen, a legend. <laughs> She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now, come on now. I love the journey that this series goes on. I can't actually explain to you in words how much I love it. It is my perfect, perfect series, a mix of mystery, historical, and fantasy. I just love it. I just, th I think Theodore Goss is like the best writer I've ever read. I can't even explain to you how amazing these books are and how much I love them. And I like wish we had more. Like one day, if I get rich, I'm gonna make a publishing house and I'm only gonna commissioned Theodora Goss to write more of these books. Like that's my sole purpose. <laughs> I just need more. And I know she would write more if like someone bought them. And I just need to make that, I need to actually work, my whole life's purpose in working is so that I can pay her to write her books. <laughs> I just love them. I just love the characters. I love their relationships, their journey. I just think it's perfect, a perfect series. And I love them. I love them very much. <laughs> so there we have it, everyone. That is my top 10 series of all time ranked. Were any of them surprises? Like any of the placings surprises? I don't know if they would be. I'm intrigued to know what you would think as people who watch my videos. Um, Because obviously I don't talk about, like I've been thinking about this stuff a lot, but I don't necessarily talk about it all the time. Like I expect you to read my mind. Um, <laughs> But thank you for watching. If you've gotten till the end, comment the bear or a bird emoji. Comment one of them down below for bear and the nightingale, one of my favorites. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.